Carl Jackson Show, and I am back with my guest, Eric Lindrum. Uh, you can find him at amgreatness.com. He's a columnist there, news columnist. Uh, you can check him out daily, honestly. Check out his work there. Also, a uh, co-host of the Right Take podcast. Uh, so make sure that you check that out as well. And what we're doing is basically talking about many of the bigger stories that broke uh, during the week so far. Uh, regarding obviously the uh, the the Trump versus Harris presidential election and how some of these stories will impact uh, the race and how they'll impact us, uh, frankly as uh, frankly as well. Uh, so I wanted to get to uh, with you, Eric. Uh, again, you had touched on uh, your columns. You have done a part one and a part uh, a, a part one and both a part two. Um, and this is still Trump's race to lose. Again, uh, just just go into a little more detail about what you mean by that, because you talked about the electoral map. Um, you talked about some of the other names that are not RFK Jr. Uh, that are in the race and how they might impact the race. Uh, so talk to the audience about that. Well, part one focuses entirely on, as you said, the electoral map, the magic number 270. That's the majority out of 538 electoral votes that one needs to be elected president. And the map, despite what you know the media may say or the polls may say, will come down to those handful of swing states. And this is still Trump's race to lose. So if you take the six swing states, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, and put them all as toss up as they should be. And you look at the states that are obviously going to go one way or the other. You know, Trump's going to hold Ohio, Iowa, Florida, and realistically is going to hold North Carolina. That's 235 electoral votes to Kamala's 226. Now, first and foremost, we need to, as Marco Rubio would say, uh, dispel this fiction that Georgia is still a swing state. All right. Georgia is pretty solidly back in President Trump's column. Now, yeah, it ultimately was very narrowly stolen from him in 2020 after he won it decisively in 2016. So what happened after that? We may remember, of course, that uh, shortly after the 2020 election, they passed a law down there in Georgia, an election integrity law that they called Jim Crow 2.0. They Jim Eagle. Out. Ex- Jim Eagle. Yeah, they said that this <laughs> law was this was racism on steroids. This is going to stop all black people in Georgia from voting. This this is horrible. The MLB pulled their all star game out of Atlanta out of protest. Democrats sued to try to get the law overturned. They all failed. The law was upheld in court. And it was finally put to the test in the 2022 midterms. Now, remember in 2018, of course, uh, all the races for statewide office in Georgia were very close. Stacey Abrams came within about two percentage points of winning the governorship. 2022, what happens? All the margins statewide increased significantly. Kemp won by a decisive, I think, a nine-point margin in the governor's race that year. Herschel Walker may have ultimately lost, but he ended up being the exception, not the rule. And his race was still the closest statewide race in Georgia that year. So between that which obviously did a good job cleaning up their voter rolls and securing their elections more. And then people talk about, oh, well, Trump and uh, Governor Brian Kemp have uh, really bad blood. Not true anymore. Yeah, Trump recently did kind of call out uh, Governor Kemp on True Social and uh, held his feet to the fire. Then we heard reports from Breitbart that behind the scenes, Governor Kemp told Senator Lindsey Graham and a few others that he is going to devote his entire political machine to getting President Trump reelected and to winning him the state of Georgia. So between those few things, again, what we have on paper with the uh, election integrity law and the new uh, reformed alliance between Kemp and Trump, Georgia goes to President Trump. I think that state is easily in Trump's column. So that puts Trump's electoral floor at 251. That's let me just, ask you. Go let, ahead. Let me. I'm sorry to interrupt, but let me let me ask you this. Do, do you suspect that at any point in time, Trump, the Trump campaign was concerned uh, about Georgia, do you think that maybe this in part had anything to do with uh, Trump and uh, and and Kemp kind of patching uh, things up? Because it's obvious to me that uh, that Trump needed uh, the, uh, the he needed Brian Kemp's machine uh, in Georgia, and that riff was just not going to be good for the Republican Party going forward. Because I think that Trump could easily win georgia uh hands down as long as he has the machine because from what i understand kamala harris is uh listen i, I we we shouldn't take her for granted uh but she can be beaten harris the harris walls ticket the mm-hmm. illegitimate non- mm-hmm. nominee as i call her uh but from what i understand they have a serious ground game in georgia eric exactly yeah and that again that was the genius of what president trump did when he you know Called out Governor Kemp on Truth Social, you know, took him to task over what he's doing for election integrity. Some people were like, no, what's he doing? He's insulting Governor Kemp. This is ridiculous. It's the art of the deal, folks. It's a negotiation tactic. 
it basically kind of flexed his muscles a little bit to show, hey, I'm willing to you know, hold you accountable and expose your lack of action to the American people, the Republican base. And what would that do for, say, a future political career for Kemp? Some say he may want to run for Senate one day. Some say he may even want to run for president himself one day. So it ultimately worked. And subsequently, them patching things up, the report from Breitbart and then the stuff publicly, that came after the Trump truth social attack. So I think he ultimately did exactly what he needed to, and it paid off. And yeah, they may have a good ground game in Georgia. It's not 400,000 volunteers like you may have been hearing in the press. That's fake news. But ultimately, it is still Trump's race to lose there. And again, the results of the 2022 midterms, Kemp went from a two-point margin of victory to a nine-point margin of victory in four years because of the election integrity law. So when you factor Georgia in, that puts Trump at 251 electoral votes at a minimum. That's just 19 away from the 270 he needs to win. So say, for example, he, at that point, flips the state of Pennsylvania, 19 electoral votes, the biggest of all the swing states. Boom, you know, call it in. It's done at that point. That's exactly 270 electoral votes. He doesn't even need Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, or Arizona. But of course, maybe he could lose Pennsylvania, but then win uh, Wisconsin and Arizona. That would put him at over 270. Wisconsin and Michigan. There's a variety of combinations here. It's like a great big puzzle with multiple pieces. At the end of the day, President Trump has way more paths to 270 than Kamala Harris does. He only needs to win maybe two or three of these swing states. Kamala Harris needs to basically win all of them. And I think she knows that. And that's why they're panicking. They may pretend like this is still her race. They may project arrogance outwardly, but internally, they're definitely panicking. Yeah, and, and this is a woman, again, uh, she does not want her policies to be exposed. We'll play you some uh, some videotape here uh, shortly. Uh, but this lady is a radical. Make no mistake about it. She's in part to blame for Proposition 47. You know, the videos that we watch when we watch these people just busting into stores, jewelry stores or department stores and stealing all of this stuff. And they can just run out with this stuff because uh, she helped to uh, codify a law to write or underwrite a law, Proposition uh, uh, 47 in California where these thieves can steal up to $950 and who's going to count the price tag. So obviously they're stealing more uh, and just get away with this stuff. Kamala Harris in part is to blame for the downfall of San Francisco and the state of California. And so as these positions are exposed, uh, she's going to be found out. And I'm sorry, this nonsense uh, that she's associated, uh, she's down with blacks, she's down with the struggle. Uh, and, and she somehow, listen, I have I have no qualms with people that have lived a, you know, a, a life where the, a, a, of wealth. Uh, don't sit here and tell me that this chick knows what it's like to deal uh, to, to to live in the hood uh, when her mother was a Ph.D. in cancer research and her father was a Ph.D. Please, please give me a break. That's complete and utter nonsense. All right. So uh, let's go to uh, your uh, your second column, basically part uh, part two, Eric, it's still Trump's race to lose. Talk to us about that. We got about two minutes. So in this one, I focus primarily on two aspects. Uh, I call them poison polls, you know, a play on poison pills and third party candidacies. And I did a bit of a mea culpa. I did write this article and publish it a few days before Robert F. Kennedy Jr. dropped out. So I did factor him into the race. But I ultimately did take a look at the other third party candidacies besides Robert F. Kennedy, namely Jill Stein, the Green Party nominee, the most popular candidate in the modern history of the Green Party. She was her nominee in 2012 and 2016. She's back again after they nominated a total nobody four years ago. And this is the key thing to remember. The Green Party is the most left-wing party in America. It is full-on socialist. They're the pro-Palestine party, among other things. And in 2016, in the three crucial Rust Belt states, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, Jill Stein, the Green Party, got more votes in each of those three states than the margins between Trump and Hillary in those three states. She basically mm. guaranteed that Trump won the election by flipping those three states. Sure, and Democrats sure. knew this. So what happened in 2020? The Democratic Party kicked it into overdrive, and they sued and used all their lawfare and their legal tactics to kick the Green Party off of every single swing state ballot, with the sole exception of Michigan. They were kicked off in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia, the lot of them. This time around now, the Green Party is prepared. And again, with the grassroots support that Jill Stein has among the progressive base, they are on the ballot in all swing states. Nevada, Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, Maine, even a few other states up for grabs. She is on the ballot again in the swing states. 
And that is cause for concern for the Democrats, as is uh, the presence of Cornell West, who's on a few uh, crucial swing state ballots as well. He is on the ballot in uh, North Carolina. He's on the ballot in Wisconsin and Michigan, as well as uh, Maine and a few others. And he's another hardcore progressive candidate, pro-Palestine, pro-Black Lives Matter. So RFK may be out of the race, but the third party par- problems of the Democratic Party are still very, very numerous. And I I think it's worth mentioning uh, just 30 seconds left in this uh, block. And then Eric will remain with us uh, for the remainder of the uh, of the program here. Uh, But I I really think it's worth mentioning that RFK, uh, again, you don't need all of his voters in order to win. You need enough of his voters to put Trump over the top. Uh, Many of his voters had already gone to Kamala uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, I think a lot of his voters. Uh, will go to our remaining voters, will go to President Trump. But there's another impact that he's going to have on the race that we'll talk about on the other side. Hey, Carl Jackson here for Wealth Protection Research. With the volatility from this election and our national debt just breaking $35 trillion for the first time ever, there has never been a better time than now to consider physical gold or silver as a way to protect your savings. I'm concerned that if this election goes sideways, things are going to get even worse. The good news is there is something you can do now ahead of whatever future chaos might be coming. Wealth Protection Research has found a gold partner in Sasko Gold that specializes in helping everyday Americans protect their retirement accounts like 401ks, IRAs, or TSPs using a loophole that allows them to convert uh, their money into physical gold or silver tax and penalty free. Text the word TRUTH to 76626 to learn more. That's right. You can break free from your captive retirement account and enjoy the peace of mind knowing your retirement savings is now stored in physical gold and silver that you control. If you're interested in learning the truth about how you can protect your retirement with gold and silver, you can get a free gold investment kit that explains it all from uh, from Saxo Gold just by texting TRUTH to 76626. Uh, Drew from Sasco is standing by uh, standing by waiting to help my listeners. Just text the word TRUTH to 76626. Tell Drew that Carl sent you. For your free gold investment kit, text the word TRUTH to 76626 and do it now. All right, welcome back to the Carl Jackson Show. Uh, One more uh, segment with you guys. We've got a lot to pack in, uh, but Eric Lindrum and I are going to try and do it. First off, I also want to make mention of this The D.C. grand jury this week returned a superseding indictment against Trump. Hat tip to Breitbart. So you had a D.C. grand jury returned a superseding indictment, excuse me, against former President Trump on four charges regarding election interference in the 2020 presidential election. Uh, Trump was charged with conspiracy to defraud the United States, a conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, obstruction of of and attempt to obstruct an official proceeding and conspiracy against rights according to the indictment guys this is uh this is Kamala Harris's modus operandi i i don't believe this is joe biden now i believe this is Kamala Harris this is a woman who just stole a nomination has never received a single vote this is an illegitimate presidential nominee uh and this is the only way that this chick can win or try to win uh in my opinion and i really don't think this is going to help her uh your uh your take real quick eric lindrum uh yeah i agree completely i'm not surprised remember shortly after she was uh she stole the nomination as you say one of her uh, first talking points at the few speeches at the rally she gave where she just repeated the same thing over and over and she says, you know, I was a prosecutor. I know Donald Trump's yep. type. And I remember at the time thinking like, really, this is your campaign name? You want to triple down, quadruple down, quintuple down even on the prosecutions against Trump when every single one of them, the FBI raid, the mugshot, the conviction, they all made his numbers go up. His fundraising went up. His popularity went up, especially when you consider we still have a sentencing coming up on September 18th, which is only going to make his numbers go up even more. So it just baffles me, again, the level of arrogance she is displaying here to think, oh, yeah, clearly this is a strategy that I should work with. This, it may not have worked the first three or four times, but this time it will definitely work. Just keep emphasizing that I'm going to throw Trump in jail and I'll win. It's, uh, that's a bold strategy. Let's see if it plays out for him. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, it doesn't surprise me at all because I think it's all she's got. This is a lady that's known for this. 
She's prosecuted pro-lifers. She went after David Deladen for exposing Planned Parenthood uh, for the butchers, the baby butchers that they are. Uh, this is the modus operandi of Kamala Harris. Okay, uh, I'm going to get a, uh, get to a couple of things uh, with you that I think are uh, really important. And Kamala Harris trying to change some of her positions. We'll try to get through, uh, get to some of those on illegal immigration, a border wall. There's now, you know, an ad out as if she's for the border wall that uh, Trump built. I mean, it's just th- this lady is such a joke. And all of these people uh, that are uh, that are trying to uh, uh, prop her up there. I just I mean, it's more reason why you should listen to shows like mine, quite frankly, uh, and check out AM Greatness. Check out Right Take Podcast. Uh, because we're going to tell you where we stand. I, I'm not going to sit here and lie. Yeah, I'm a conservative. Yes, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend otherwise, uh, but I'm going to give you the news too. All right, let's go back to RFK, uh, RFK Jr. I mean, there's some polling out there that suggests uh, the people that have, uh, obviously at RFK saw that there was no way uh, in, uh, way for him uh, to win, uh, to win basically. Uh, and, and, and a lot of, once, once, uh, uh, once Harris stole the nomination, uh, from from Biden and folks don't believe for a second she didn't have anything to do uh, with the with the soft coup that uh, that we just witnessed with Joe Biden. The only way that Nancy Pelosi could leverage the 25th Amendment is if Kamala Harris was willing to pull the trigger. So don't ever believe that she wasn't a part uh, of, of that coup. Uh, she most definitely uh, she most definitely was. Um, but this R uh, this RFK thing, I I I again. He he drops out. He doesn't he doesn't see a, a way forward. He suspends his campaign. He endorses Trump. Uh, some people had already gone to Kamala once Biden was kicked out of the uh, was kicked out of the race, basically. So I think she's got all the people that she's going to get. Uh, but now with RFK coming out uh, again, I don't think the numbers will be huge. But I do think it'll benefit Trump in the long run. And I want to get your take on this. And you uh, you have some things that you want to share about RFK Jr. as well, Eric. Uh, but I want to get your take on this. I think how this RFK Jr. Um, uh, uh, suspending his campaign benefits Trump uh, is, is simply by this. And the same is true with Tulsi Gabbard. And, and, and policy-wise, I'm not a fan of these guys. I know a lot of conservatives are, I, you know, I, I'm not a fan of these guys. But I do respect and I love their courage. There are some things that they do say that I agree with, uh, just like RFK said, uh, some of the things that he outlined totally agree with. And I'm okay with liberals that disagree with me as long as long as they're uh, with me on the fundamentals of the Bill of Rights, then I'm completely good. Here's how I think RFK benefits the race, Eric. I think that if Trump can make the play, and I know people are seeing it visually, all right, but I think if Trump can make the play, guys, these Kam- Kamala Harris and Walls are radicals. These are Democrats. These are liberals. We can agree to disagree on issues, and then we can agree on other issues. We're the people that are uniting the country. What say you, Eric? Agree completely. As the New York Post uh, mentioned in their big cover story the day after RFK endorsed Trump, it was a great big, that beautiful picture of President Trump and RFK shaking hands with fireworks going out behind them. And the headline simply said, a Kennedy endorses a Republican. That is something we never thought we would see. It is the most famous Democrat political dynasty in American history. And for the first time, you know, the current, I guess, basically the heir apparent to the family the guy who's named after the famous senator who himself was assassinated on the campaign trail in 1968, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. came out and endorsed President Trump. And if you listen to the speech, A, the speech that RFK gave himself, you know, at his own press conference a few hours before, and then again, the, fi- the very short, like, five-and-a-half-minute speech he gave at the Trump rally, it was a unifying message. He didn't necessarily talk about super partisan issues, you know, like taxes or immigration or whatever. He gave a broader theme of unity, of that we are against a deep state. We are against out of control wars. We are against America becoming an unhealthy nation. You know, we want to make our kids healthy again. It was a very broadly unifying speech. And as President Trump himself said, and I actually have a friend who was at that rally in Glendale where uh, RFK was introduced, the applause and the cheers when RFK came out on stage was electric. It was unlike anything you have ever heard for any guest in a Trump rally ever before because that audience knew the historic nature of that endorsement. And that's why he's continuing to campaign for President Trump, as well as Tulsi Gabbard and other prominent former Democrats. And if you look at just some of the polling here, just a couple of examples I'll give you. This is a poll from Harris X. That's a mainstream pollster, a national poll. 
with RFK in the race, Kamala got 46% to Trump's 44%, with RFK getting 9%, which is still an electoral college victory for Trump, by the way, but with Harris narrowly in the lead popular vote. With RFK factored out in a head to head matchup, Trump takes the lead 51 to 49 over Kamala. And then this is something I actually discovered shortly before I jumped onto your show here, Carl. Uh, this is a memo from pollster uh, Tony Fabrizio, you know, who does polling for the Trump campaign. And he took a look at the RFK vote share in seven crucial swing states and how many of them break for Trump versus Kamala. The swing states being Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. Across these seven states, his percentage, Kennedy's total percentage in those states, ranged from 3% to 5% of the vote. Which, that when you look at huge. how close all the swing states were in 2016 and 2020, decided by 1% or less, that's yeah. huge. Uh, Arizona, of those RFK voters who were asked to go to either Trump or Harris when he drops out, 53% go to Trump, 28% to Kamala. Georgia, 47% to Trump, 34% to Kamala. North Carolina, 58% to Trump, 22% to Kamala. This is huge. Nevada, 66% go to Trump, just 16% for Kamala Harris. Wisconsin, big swing state, 55% to, to Kamala's 25%. Uh, those are just a few of them. Clearly, RFK's support breaks overwhelmingly for Trump in the binary choice of Trump versus Kamala. A few more may then just decide to go home and not vote for either candidate, which basically is a net win for Trump, and then a small percentage, you know, 30% or less, break for Kamala Harris. So yeah, I, I think you're right. He won't make a big difference but in an election that's going to be this close, it doesn't need to be a big difference. A difference of just one or two or three percent can make all the difference in the swing states. Here, here's a we only have a minute and a half left here. So uh, we touched on this during uh, the break. I want to touch on it briefly here. Mark Zuckerberg comes out and admits the Biden Harris uh, campaign pressured him uh, in in uh, in 2020 to kind of suppress that uh, uh, the uh, the laptop story um, as well as. Uh, basically not help out the Trump campaign and help them out. Uh, also, you have this France, uh, this guy in France, uh, this Telegram founder and CEO, Pavel Durand, that was arrested there basically on issues of free speech and what people were saying uh, on, on his platform. So this Zuckerberg thing, uh, and then this gentleman, the CEO from Telegram, I'm concerned about free speech here. Uh, I'm concerned that a, come, uh, a Harris Walls ticket will come after people uh, like uh, like you and I. I think this is another reason why RFK Jr. speaking out about censorship when he endorsed Trump uh, is a very big deal. We got about 30 seconds. Yeah, the Zuckerberg thing is interesting because it's the first time he's basically admitted fault and said he regrets his role in censorship in 2020, which between that and former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey saying something very similar a few years back, and you look at all the various you know, people in the tech sector, as well as cryptocurrency, the Winklevoss twins and others who have come out and endorsed Trump, You're kind of following Elon Musk's lead, basically. I think Musk basically kind of started the trend and said, hey, it's OK for us tech bros and crypto bros to be pro-Trump. It, you can't exactly. help but wonder if maybe a trend has been started here. And if people like Zuckerberg are following it, that's a really big deal. We can only hope so. Guys, until next time, do not grow weary doing good. And God bless you. Right now, you can get the queen size premium my pillow for only nineteen ninety eight. My pillow is made with a patented adjustable feel. It adjusts to your exact individual needs, regardless of your sleep position. And guys, I can tell you, I have them stashed. I'm not gonna lie to you, all over the house in every single room. I will fall asleep on the couch. I could fall asleep in a chair. I'm not gonna lie because I, I'm, my body just works weird. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. Anyway. And I, I had a crick in my neck because I didn't sleep with my pillow. The next night, I made sure that I did, and I felt absolutely fine. It helps keep your neck aligned, and it holds its shape all night long so you get the best sleep of your life. But that's not all. Get their six-piece kitchen or bath towel sets for only 25 bucks. The brand-new mattress topper for as low as $69.98. And their famous MyPillow bed sheets for as low as $25 and so much more. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-858-0263. Use the promo code CARL, C-A-R-L. I don't spell it like the Marxist, uh, to get huge discounts on all MyPillow products, including the premium queen size MyPillow that's only $19.98. That's the lowest price ever. Don't delay. Order today. Use promo code CARL, C-A-R-L, at checkout. All right, Carl Jackson here for Priority Gold. 
Economists warn that massive tax hikes could devastate your IRA and your 401k account as the stock market braces for impact. With inflation on the rise and global uncertainty looming, it's clear why central banks and savvy Americans are turning to gold. In times like this, Proverbs 2120 reminds us to preserve what we built. Right now, that wisdom points us towards gold. If you haven't had your eye on gold, time to make it a priority. My name is Carl Jackson, and I'm urging you to call my friends at Priority Gold to find out how they can help you diversify your savings with physical gold and silver. Call 1-800-405-GOLD or visit PriorityGold.com slash golden for a free gold info guide. Plus, see if you qualify for free shipping and storage. Act now to get your portfolio working for you while the market is golden. Call 1-800-405-GOLD to speak with a gold specialist or visit PriorityGold.com slash golden to learn more. That's 1-800-405-GOLD. 